back to Storytime with Captain Xavier. I'm Chelo Lorino, and I play Captain Xavier here on YouTube and in various other places, including the big Nerf events that I go to. I actually will go in character and be all in costume and name tags and Captain Xavier and leading troops and all of that silliness. And this time you elected to hear the story of the crew, myself and the crew, going to End War uh, down in Georgia. So that's the story that I'm going to tell, and then I'll go over the loot that I've been meaning to go over since the event and just haven't gotten around to it. So we'll, I'll do that at the end after uh, the story, but before I give you the options for the next story. So this was the first end war that I went to. I'd been you know, asked if I was going to go to the previous ones, and I, just, I didn't have either the travel funds or the time or uh, really a good enough reason to go. I, FoamCon sounded interesting, but I didn't know enough of the people at that time to really make it worth my while. I didn't think I was you know, big enough to warrant having my own table, even though I was offered one. Uh, and I had heard that the HVZ portion of it was uh, not the, the main draw. So I hadn't been inspired to go yet. Well, this time, we actually got hired because the crew is actually a, a mercenary company. We're, we are a private security company, which and we do all sorts of private security stuff, site security and bouncing and evictions and, and property disputes and stuff like that. But we also do a lot of military reenactment for, like, Ren Fairs. We go and we be their pike block, or we do... Um, HVZs as NPCs or things like uh, Afterworlds as NPCs. Uh, we've also guest lectures at colleges for military history, teaching Pike and Roman shield wall and Greek phalanx and stuff like that. Um, so it wasn't unheard of for the crew to be hired to go to an event like this. And the person who hired us wanted us to, one, keep them alive as long as possible, but also really make the zombies work for it. They wanted the zombies to be afraid of the humans because they usually aren't because why should they be? Uh, so they offered to pay for at least um, for the travel and the housing and that that was a lot of money <laughs> and that made it so that I could go and also more importantly it made it so that I could bring members of the crew so I tried to get as many of the veteran crew as I could I did have new crew that had been um, signed up locally and a few had actually uh, met their requirements to become full voted members uh, but I wanted to get some of the, the veteran HVZers that had played with us at WSU and, and U of I. Uh, unfortunately, I was only able to get two of them. I was able to get Lieutenant Wolfric, and I was able to get uh, Seamstress at Arm, Astrid, uh, our quartermaster. Uh, they were both able to make it. The um, Sergeant Major, well, unfortunately, had annual training with the National Guard, so he wasn't able to make it. Uh, and uh, Corporal Ulrich uh, wasn't able to get the time off. So... Those two were able to make it, and so the other two that ended up on the, the docket for this were Sergeant Lance and Corporal Nick uh, of the local chapter that I've created. So those were the, the, the five, myself and those four were the, the five that were officially hired. Other members of the crew did go. Um, Ryan from Silver Fox Industries was there, uh, Luchathor was there, and uh, Brett was there but they weren't part of the, the hired crew, and so they ended up doing their own thing rather than running with us, uh, which was perfectly acceptable. We also picked up as many auxiliary as we could, uh, and there were a fair number of auxiliary there. Sergeant Armour was there, uh, Corporal Spectre was there, uh, Corporal TK was there, uh, Corporal Fusco was... No, I don't think Fusco was there. I think he was deployed with the Navy. Um, Anyway, yeah, so we were, we were hired. We were flown out. Um, we ended up flying into Atlanta and then driving down. And uh, Foam Fest was, or Foam Con, I'll be going to Foam Fest in the UK next year, so that's why I, I keep getting that one popping into my head. It's an alliteration. It sounds better. Foam Con uh, was a lot of fun. It, it was, the venue was too small, and the event seemed too short. And I don't know if that was just a matter of they only had the venue for that long. Uh, but it did seem like it was cut short in order to allow for two missions on Friday night, which I th felt was a bit much. I would have done one, like, midnight mission or something uh, and made it a mission zero that didn't really count for anything. But they decided to do full missions, uh, two full missions. And uh, the weather in Georgia was unlike anything I have ever experienced and was not prepared for. It was hot and it was humid, like 98 degrees and 98% humidity. Uh, we, we drank as much fluid as we could and tried to you know, continue to hydrate throughout the day. Um, but 
Astrid, Seamstress at Arms, our quartermaster, unfortunately did go down to the heat after the first mission and was not able to recover for the second day, um, which was unfortunate because she traveled all that way and you know our employer had um, paid for that and then she unfortunately just wasn't able to, to, to do it. So she ended up um, helping with the FOB and operations and all of that. Um, yeah, so it was it was fun. We ended up flying into Atlanta and driving down, and that was a lot of fun because you know having the old crew meeting the new crew and everybody just yep yep we're all we're all friends. We're we're the right people. We are we are the yep I picked the right guys to be part of this family, um, and uh, yeah we we did our thing. The I this was the week after West vs Zombies and. The day before West vs. Zombies, I moved, so I was not nearly as organized as I would have liked to have been. Uh, the auxiliary was definitely not up to the level that I would eventually like it to be at. Uh, but there were a few that were able to, uh, to help out. Mostly we, we ended up uh, kind of scattered throughout the various groups. The way the game was set up, uh, there were three main groups of humans divided into kind of the three Hogwarts houses, but with different names and, and all of that. And... Um, so there really there there hadn't been any coordination on how to get auxiliary on the same one, and so we ended up kind of scattered all over the place. Uh, all of the crew that I'd brought ended up on the same team. Uh, I don't think the other crew members did. I don't know what team they ended up on. Uh, I know they. I think Brett was the last human standing, so that's something for the crew. Um, but we had the the four the five of us originally, and then eventually the the four of us. So we also then of course had the guy who'd hired us. He was running with us. Uh, and armor ran with us for most of the time. So we had a, a good amount of troops, and we were well-armed and well-organized. And that was kind of the thing, is going into this, I had no idea what End War was going to be like compared to other HVZs that I've been in. I'd done the U of I, and I'd done WSU for several years, and I'd done OSU, and I'd done WWU, and I'd been to one for um, uh, Ever, Evergreen. And they were all different. Different kinds of super zombies, different rules, different respawn rules. I'd also, at that point, I think, done um, PSU and West versus zombies. So uh, everything was different. I had no idea, okay, how different is End War going to be? And the super zombies were a little bit different. They had boomers, which could, if you shot them, they stuck down a staff, and then they became a, a respawn point. Zombies just had to run around them, and they respawned. So if you t didn't tag them while they were really far away, then you had zombies spawning right next to you. So that was interesting. They then also had tanks that when you shot them, they were stunned for five seconds and would then focus on whoever had shot them last, had tagged them. Um, so you really couldn't keep, you couldn't hold ground very easily. We did at one point when we really, we had to hold ground, there wasn't an option. We needed to, to hold this ground for as long as we could. We played tank pong, where we had two guys. One would shoot the tank, the tank would be stunned for five seconds and then go towards him. The other guy would shoot the tank, he'd be stunned for five seconds and then head towards him. And they just went back and forth. And we traded out as guys needed to reload. And then finally we were able to get the column moving again and we moved out. Uh, and we did our, our usual, we, we covered the rear. That's what we were good at. It's also the most vulnerable. Uh, the people who are up front are focused on you know, looking ahead and seeing what's going on. The people in the back have a tendency to turn around at the wrong time or not be paying attention. And, and that's where the, the zombies pick you off from, from the rear of the column. So we covered the six, and we did our standard set, move, set, move, set, move when necessary, when we actually were being pressured by enemies and, and that, on all that. The, the biggest issue was getting followed by tanks, where it's really hard to hold ground, and the column stopping for something, because, oh, well, we're not sure which way to go. We're like, well, then go around in circles, but keep the column moving. Uh, I keep sending Sergeant Armor to the front to get the column moving. We can't hold the ground. Uh, and the first mission was kind of a mess because they went with the whole Harry Potter theme, so everything was was themed. So instead of you know we're on we're on a college campus, and so and they instead of saying instead of going to Roberts Hall, they'd say go to the potions lab. Well, we don't know what the potions lab is, and we're also most of us are brand new to the campus, so we don't know where any like we don't we're like, we assume potion lab probably chem lab, maybe. Uh, but we didn't know where the chem lab was. We were you know, constantly trying to find, is there anyone in this column that is local to this school that knows where anything is? And sometimes they were, but if they got separated or if they got taken out, then we were just wandering around. And that kind of ended up being what most of it was, was just wandering aimlessly around campus with a horde of zombies following you around. 
Um, the first mission was particularly bad because the four groups got sent, and they each got given their own mission. Um, what was the equivalent of Slytherin House got made zombies, though it only lasted for that first mission. Um, Gryffindor, what was equivalent of Gryffindor bravery or whatever they were, um, ended up basically they just had to hold while Slytherin tried to wipe them out, which was very fitting. Uh, we were, I assume, Ravenclaw. Uh, we got the, the riddles, the puzzles, and then Hufflepuff was who knows what they were doing. Um, well, it turns out what Hufflepuff did was mess up our riddle. Uh, we, got to, we got to the first location, found the riddle, read the riddle, figured out, okay, it's probably over here. We got over there, uh, and we searched, and we searched, and we searched, and we searched. We must have gone around the building four or five times with a handful of zombies, not very many zombies. They're, they were all busy wiping out Gryffindor. Uh, but there was a handful of zombies following us, so we had to keep moving constantly. Uh, but we couldn't find the clue, and we couldn't find it. And the, and the mod that was there was like, well, this is, you know, basically going, this is the building, you just need to find it. Problem was, he wasn't the mod that placed it. He didn't know what we were looking for, or what it was supposed to look like, or where it was supposed to be. It turns out, the Hufflepuff group had gone through before us and taken our clue. So we wasted most of the entire mission trying to find a MacGuffin that wasn't there. Bloody Hufflepuffs. Um, so yeah, that was fun. Next day, there were similar things, wandering around trying to find clues that we, we didn't know what we were doing, we didn't know what was going on. Uh, we ended up at one point, I think it was all the humans in one big mass, and therefore all the zombies were after us, and going around in circles trying to complete some quest that probably would have been easier in smaller groups, but that wasn't what happened. Uh, at that point, I think that was a third mission? Yeah, third mission. I then took my group and we, we pulled off. We tried to pull off as many of the zombies as we could and we went one way so that the group that was working on the mission could continue the mission. And it worked. We were able to pull off a lot of the zombies. Unfortunately, our employer missed the order that we were splitting off and he ended up staying with the main group uh, along with uh, a number of the auxiliary and they were holding rear guard as we do. And the, they assumed that the people that they were guarding, doing rear guard for, for, were going to watch their backs, which they didn't, which is why you don't trust non-auxiliary to cover your back. And so a tank walked up and just took out the entire rear guard. Uh, took out Spectre and our employer and several other key auxiliary. Uh, all got taken out by the same tank who just walked up and boop, 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 boop. Like, oh, fuck. You no one can do shit. Oh, for the fallen auxiliary! Bang! 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 Our column didn't lose anybody. Um, we then got uh, a massive storm rolled in, uh, which was refreshing, but also thunder and lightning and, and all of that. And so we ended up uh, in the middle of, like a couple minutes into the fourth mission, there was a pause. And um, uh, there was a hold on the game. We were like, if it passes, then we'll be fine, but we're not going to be playing in the lightning. If it's just rain, that might be okay. There's an awful lot of lipos on the field, but, uh, you know. Um, and it was during this hold that one of the moderators came up to me and said, uh, the zombies are having a hard time. They're not getting many tags anymore, and um, they can't get through you and your men, m the, me and the four guys. I think we, we had me... Um, Lance, Nick, Wolfric. We'd picked up uh, Jed, the Australian cowboy. We had uh, armor, I think, had, was in a different column at that point. Uh, and a couple of auxiliary that were holding the rear guard to the point of, yeah, our column had not lost anybody. We had a, at least a dozen zombies, including tanks and boomers, following us, and they just couldn't get through. And they weren't going to get through because they were using the same tactics over and over again, and we knew how to deal with those tactics. Uh, we were we had the firepower, we had the coordination to hold them all day. We had the ammunition to hold them all day. They were never going to break through. And so the moderators did something that I actually found impressive. I thought it was actually very impressive and mature of them to just come to us and go, hey, could you take it easy? Because um, the other, I mean, they could have just started making everybody tanks. They could have forced us to split up. They could have, there's, there's all number of things that they could have done um, to try to, to cancel us out. But they decided to go the easy route and just ask us. And that's something that I've said that the auxiliary is more than willing to do, if necessary, for, the, for, for game balance. Um, because professional soldiers are a... That level of training uh, is a force multiplier that most people don't truly understand how powerful that can be. 
Uh, and it can be very frustrating when you're the, you know, don't have that training and get thrown at that training and just wave after wave after zombies and us almost looking bored taking them out. You know, one guy almost, uh, he almost had me and the lieutenant shoots over my shoulder and takes him out. And he's like, oh, I thought I had you. It's like, I'm, I'm sure you did. Uh, and the lieutenant's going, no. And the guy was going, no, I, I was a fool. Um, and so for them to just come to us and go, hey, could you take it easy, was, uh, I thought, very very mature of them as, as, as a game organization that they understood that they, they could do that. And you know, they asked, you know, could you let a couple of zombies through and tag some humans? And I said, no, uh, that I'm not willing to do because that will make us look bad and we have a reputation to create. Uh, but I can do something else. And so at that point we, had, we were running out of time. We had two objectives left. We'd actually completed a bunch of the objectives. Um, so we had one objective that was really far away and one that was fairly close and was near the end point. So I called for 20 runners, um, appointed um, a, a corporal, said, okay, you take 20 runners, get to that objective, if at all possible. But don't throw your lives away r needlessly. If it's covered or if there's Zeds, just abandon it and, and scatter or whatever you need to do. The rest of you push on to the final objective, we'll hold the zombies. Um, and they said, okay. Uh, they, they called game back on because uh, the, the lightning stopped, the rain stopped. They called game on. Um, orders were given, they started moving, the crew turned and lined up and started in with, lo there do I see my father. And then the whole rear guard took it up and I got chills. It was so cool. I'm not going to lie. Um, the zombies just stopped. Um, and the, a whole bunch of the zombies that were back there were auxiliary. Um, Spectre was there as a tank. Uh, there was a bunch of other auxiliary. And the non-auxiliary Zeds apparently just noped. They just left when they saw us come online. Um, and in the distance, the lightning rumbled and lo there do I see my mother and my sister and my brothers. Um, and about that time, I looked over my shoulder to see how far the humans were, how the rest of the horde or the rest of the group had gotten away. And they were just gone. They had to have all just sprinted. And I heard afterwards that, of course, the runners, the, the, tw the 20 that I'd sent, yeah, they full on sprinted and were gone the moment I said, hello, they were off. Uh, and then there was a, one fellow, I wish I'd gotten his name and hopefully he'll see this and will um, we'll comment who it was because I'd like to give him credit. Um, he apparently, the moment we turned and came online, he got the humans moving. He's like, no, go, 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 run, 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 run. And people are like, well, shouldn't we stop and help? Like, no, they're doing their job so we can do ours. Move, move, move. And got them moving and got the column just gone. <laughs> I don't even know which way they went. Um, those zombies then came at us with everything they had, and they'd picked up more zombies. There were like six tanks coming at us, um, and boomers. Uh, I think we had a boomer go off like five feet from us with the zombies just running around in circles with us just going blam, blam, blam. All right, now we go. And we did a tactical retreat. Um, we then got to a, a choke point, stunned everything we could stun and turned and bolted uh, in the opposite direction of where the humans had gone. And since we were the last ones that had hit the tanks, the tanks had to come after us. Um, we ran until we pretty much reached the edge of the game field and then found a nice hill and turned and took our stand. I was tired. It was the end of mission four. I didn't want to run anymore. And we had plans. We wanted to be zombies anyway. Um, and so we, we, we held our ground until I ran out of ammunition and Spectre took me to the ground. Um, it's all on video somewhere. It's fantastic. And uh, Lieutenant, uh, there were a couple of non-crew that had come with us that decided they wanted to live. So Lieutenant led them off um, far enough so that they could then make a run for it and then held until he got taken out. Um, and it, it was an absolute perfect last stand, which was, I'm glad that we got that because there didn't end up being the big last stand that a lot of big HVZs have, where in the end it's the last group of humans against the horde of zombies and the zombies charge and the humans try to bust through or, or whatever. That ended up not happening. It just kind of, the humans got picked off bit by bit, scattered into small groups. There were a couple of little groups that tried to make an end run for the, the final objective in Mission 5, only to find us waiting for them at the objective um, and to, to, to put up a heck of a fight, but uh, they, they slowly all got picked off. But there, as far as I know, maybe I missed it because I was in the wrong group of zombies, but I never saw the big apocalyptic final stand. I just saw columns of humans getting picked off from behind because they didn't have a rear guard anymore because we'd all died. Um, we then went into something that I refer to as posh reavers. And this requires some explanation. I, I, 
I think I explained it in an Afterworlds video. Um, yeah, sure we did. And so we, we brought back Posh Weaver, Reavers. This was actually, yeah, um, we had to get more wigs because uh, Astrid and um, Wolfric didn't have a wig. Um, and uh, since Astrid ended up being out for that mission, we ended up giving the wig to Judd, the, the Australian Nerf cowboy. Uh, and he went posh reaving with us. And we took it to a, a, another level, or at least some of us did. Nick, Corporal Nick, was down to uh, booty shorts and running shoes and a gold wig. Um, and he hooked up with another guy who was similarly dressed. And they tag-teamed columns of humans all by themselves, or one of them would pop out of the bushes in front of them and pose, and they'd, everyone would just be like, why is, train? why is he wearing a wig? And then the other one would rush up the column from behind and got like, apparently they, they record, they, uh, the, the highest was the guy got a dozen tags in one rush. Uh, stuff like that. Um, and the rest of us just flouncing about being weird. Uh, and we had a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, FoamCon, like I said, was great, but seemed short and too small of a venue. Um, hopefully next year they have a larger area and don't try to do so much on the same day. Uh, but it's at PSU, and they really know how to run an HVZ. The, the PSU Invitational was one of the best HVZs I've ever been to. So I, uh, I would agree with what a lot of people said. FoamCon was the big draw, getting to see all of the different vendors and all of the big names. Like I said, the venue was small, and the event was short, but it was still just amazing to see all the people there. Uh, people I'd heard about, people I'd seen in videos, people I didn't even know existed, people that are local. I mean, Luke was there, obviously. Um, and... Uh, and yeah, that was fantastic. But the HVZ ended up being what a lot of people said. It was kind of, it wasn't bad. I, I've, I've been to some bad HVZs, and it, I wouldn't say it was a bad HVZ. It was just, it wasn't spectacular. And you'd kind of, you know, all of the hype you hear about Endwar, you'd expect it to be an absolutely spectacular HVZ. But I think a lot of that was the whole Harry Potter theme resulted in it being even more confusing than it would normally be because not only were we not familiar with the campus but all of the missions were essentially in code because it was go to the potions building or you need to align the stars or you know and that you know it makes it interesting to have the, the extra storyline but since we didn't know what those things meant and we didn't know where we were we ended up doing a lot of just milling around aimlessly getting picked off and that that may be more our mistake than anyone else's but uh we had a lot of fun. Um, our employer dying in mission three because he got separated from the people that were supposed to be protecting us, that's definitely a stain on our reputation. Um, that, was, that was our bad, not keeping track of the package. That, that is definitely on us. Uh, he insists that he was okay with it because he was getting tired anyway and he wanted to, you know, it was better to be a zombie. Um, and he also said that what he really wanted was for us to put the fear into the zombies and the fact that the moderators had to come to us and ask us to tone it down would suggest that we succeeded in that portion. So he is planning to try to probably try to hire us again next year. Um, so that should be that should be a lot of fun. Um, like I said, next one's at PSU. Weather shouldn't be as bad. The campus is fantastic. Uh, I know the people who are running it, and I definitely believe they will be able, if, if they're given uh, a free reign, they will put together an amazing HVZ. The kinds of missions that they ran were unlike missions I'd ever quite seen before. Some of the little details and little sneaky things that they did were just really well done. So I'm really hopeful for next year, and that should be a lot of fun, because I will probably go to the PSU Invitational and then go again to Endor, so I'll get to get familiar with the campus again. Uh, so yeah, that was that was the crew at Endwar. We then packed up and took the long trip home. We had to drive back to Atlanta and fly back to SeaTac. Uh, yeah, it was good. It was good seeing the lieutenant in action again and just being able to click right back to yep, this is how this works. Moving set, moving set, knowing that I don't have to worry when I turn to to move, I'm covered. And that there were several, like I said, there were several times where zombies rushed when I turned only to get taken out by the guys who were set, which was their job. Um, and then I would set for them, and the zombies would make a rush for them when they turned, and zap, zap, and yep. Um, and that's why we, we do that. It allows us to, to move quickly, but tactically. Um, you're never, you know, looking over your shoulder. You're never running backwards. You're, it's, 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 it's works. 
So there will be a lot more of that. Um, this year I did NPC work as much as I possibly could for various reasons. I had this going on. I had all sorts of other things. I didn't have the time to really focus on trying to get the auxiliary as organized and as trained as I would like them to be. Next year I'm not going to play NPCs. I will be leading the auxiliary and the crew in battle anywhere and everywhere that I go, like we did at End War. Um, so there will be a lot more training videos. There will be a lot more organization. We're going to be working on getting our communications up and running. I'm going to get my ham radio license. Um, as many of the uh, local crew as I can are going to get it as well. Turns out it's not that hard to do. Um, so we will be getting in on more communications. We're going to try to get the FOBs more organized, actually have a forward operating base uh, and have all that organized, food, water, ammunition, whatever else we need um, at a a location on campus that auxiliary and crew can go to for whatever reason. Um, we will try to start organizing things like the, the R&D portion of things, trying to organize uh, the Quartermaster Corps. Um, I have somebody who reached out to me and they are helping me develop a standard issue um, crew and auxiliary HVZ strifle, uh, very similar to my own, which is you know a strifle with an underslung magnus. Um, it'll be all the different 3D parts that you need to build it um, as well. There'll be both a, a really simple version that uses a retaliator stock and a retaliator barrel and then we're also going to have a custom barrel and a custom stock if you want to pay for the, the printing for a, a fancier one or if you have a printer and can do the fancier one. Otherwise it'll be mostly small parts like the, the rail attachment to attach the magnus and top rail and side rail and flared magwell and handle cap and all those little little details that make it good. Um, we're going to have those be more or less standard issue because I still argue that the Alpha Trooper and a semi-auto Strife are still the best HVZ blasters. Um, and the Magnus is, of course, you often, a lot of the HVZs have super zombies that can only be taken out by Mega or higher, so having a Mega Blaster built in uh, is valuable. So that is part of what we will be doing next year, especially for End War and for Ragnar Oktoberfest. Um, it'll be interesting to see how, how organized we're able to get in that short amount of time. If five crew members had to be told to tone it down, what will 50 auxiliary do? Um, obviously, mo most of the auxiliary aren't going to be at the, that same level of training, but I'm hoping we can get some decent training going. Um, so that should be a lot of fun. So that's that was End War. It was a blast. Uh, we all got zombified and then went silly and had an absolute wonderful time. Um, and all right. Loot. I was given a lot of loot by a lot of different people. I think all of this was and or. Some of it might have been West vs. Zombies. It all ended up in the same suitcase because they were a week apart and I practically didn't unpack. So um, this may be loot from both of those, but there's some really cool stuff in here. And some of it I'd forgotten about and I'm like, oh, that's where that went. Uh, okay, let's look at the loot. All right then, let's look at some loot. Like I said, some of this may have been... In fact, I'm sh pretty sure some of it was actually West vs. Zombies, but it, I'm just going to show it off here. Some wonderful, wonderful person, who I should know, DOF apparently, Duke of Foam, something like that, made me a, a stock that is tentacles. It's, uh, it's tentacles. I, d I don't know why. It's, it's glorious. I love it. It's... It's hilarious and, and, and very sturdy. Um, you can put bolts in to bolt it down, but apparently it friction fits fairly good. So that's cool. Apparently there is more, like a whole, it, it turns a strife into a whole just Lovecraftian nightmare apparently. And I, I look forward to hopefully eventually having all of the parts. I got a, a fair amount of Lego. I got a, a, another X-Wing from the new movies. Um, so it's in my colors, which is, of course, cool. It'll go with the, the big one. I have the full-sized one. I also got um, parts. So there's a whole bunch of, like, armor and helmet parts and medallions and feathers and clone trooper helmets. There is also then a knight. I always loved this this armor from that era, from that 1991 through a couple of years after armor. Absolutely fantastic. So that'll end up in the various collections once I get the Lego room built. I need I will be hopefully working on that over the winter now that the makerspace is fairly built. I got another 
a, a knight on a scooter whose armor is partially clear, but his sword is very, very cool. Some sort of, I think it's from the Nexo Knights. But he's on a scooter, and I have no explanation for that. I got zombie blood. Apparently it's an energy drink. But I'm gonna just hang it at like like a like a banana bag. Uh let's see. I got this was a rare find. And the person who gave me this, I, I it baffles me. This is a refill pack for the gyro strike. Which is a really obscure blaster. I do have it on the wall. It was from I think 2001. And it's a a manual flywheeler. Big flywheels, you you prime it up and it gets going and then you it pushes a bunch of these in. The only part of it I don't have is the hopper. It's supposed to have a hopper that hold, held like five rounds and then it had two extra on the side and you could get refill packs for it. So yeah, I'll actually be able to, to test that out and fire it when um, the curator and I do the video on it. I hate to open it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it just so that we can actually uh, test it. I will probably, I'll try to open it in such a way that I don't destroy it too badly. Um, Hopefully I can actually put it slightly back together and just staple it or something and then put it back on display in its original packaging. Um, but I want to be able to actually test that blaster and fire it, so I have the ammo for that. That is super, super cool. I have no idea what this is. Um, it's a kit of some kind. I think I might have actually printed this for somebody else and then they weren't there. I want to say it's a slam fire kit for a retaliator. Or something like that. But I didn't run into the person, or it's something else that was given to me. I don't know, but it's here. It was in the back. Some wonderful person. Ultrasonic? Someone named Brian. Um, gave me this, and it's most of the parts necessary for a um, brushless motor setup. So it's a brushless motor cage, 3D printed brushless motor wheels, control boards... Uh, Arduino, I assume these are the control boards for the motors. I have absolutely no idea how any of this works. I have yet to try to get into brushless motors, but when I do, I have a kit. And I've got a phone number and a thingiverse. So, yeah, that is super, super cool. All right, this was swag bag number the first... Some of this I don't think actually belongs in here. I'm pretty sure this ammo has no business being here. Put it back in the bag. Uh, ammo counter. Their little pamphlet. Ammo counter ammo. Very cool. HVZ Sydney. I'm not sure what this is is but that's a thing um a mandalorian with a cowboy hat no idea see you next tuesday this is um this is dirty but you have to be australian to understand it apparently it was explained to me um i believe these are thumb screw upgrades for the timed grenade launcher i don't know why they're in this bag a whole bunch of custom leather cards. I should dole these out at events. Sent to me by Clue Bay Leather. They're local. They go to Afterworlds. Um, they're down in Beaverton. An enamel Darth Vader patch. Rule the galaxy. Ammo counter patches. Which, if they have Velcro, they do! Okay, that's going on the wall. Behind me. And then this is a sticker. SCNC patches from 2018. I think I've got an older one. And then uh, Royal Manticore Navy, 2007 to 2017, celebrating 10 years. Cool. Need to get some Velcro on that so I can add it to the patch wall. A Stewart's Root Beer Camp. A Dead Dart. One Accu fake. A couple of clips. Somebody clipped these to me. Because that's a thing the kids do these days, apparently, is clip clips to you. And they're in my colors, so that was fun. 
patches, patches, patches. I've got this. Whatever this is. What is this? Open up. It is, uh, it, 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 all right. It's another tiny replica firearm with all of the bits. This one is apparently shell ejecting. Am I getting that on the right way? I was. But upside down. Yeah, anyway, yeah, it's got shells and little bullets. You put the little shells in. And it shoots them. And then ejects the shells. Which is pretty schnazzy. Folding stock, but tear down. Eh. Don't remember where that came from. If you know who you are, go ahead and put yourself in the comments. That was me. I gave you the thing. And I will go, thank you. Sorry, I forgot. All right. There's all that. On to the next bag of loot. I got a bunch of stuff from Judd the Nerf Cowboy, who then ended up coming and hanging out with me for a week. He was originally going to go from um, Georgia to Louisiana and then to Texas, but both of them were apparently underwater at the time. So he decided to come hang out with me, and we went, did some nerfing, did some thrifting, did some nerfing. He helped in the shop. We did a video. It was fun. He gave me this. And it's one of those buttons that says Australian phrases. So that's fabulous. It'll have to go in here somewhere. Um, a drop bear stencil. Uh, paper. What's what's the paper? Human briefing. Human briefing. Somebody give me a cylinder. Somebody gave me another Lego figure, and it occurred to me afterwards that it looks remarkably like a uh, a Lego. Now I can't think of his name. Uh, Australian folklore character. Nope. Can't think of his name now. I'll hopefully think of it at some point or look it up. Um, mints from Hawaii, apparently. Meow. Vegemite. He brought me Vegemite. I don't know why. Whew. But he did. I got a bunch of hybrid pushers from Devil Z. He was just doling them out at the end of Foam Con. So they will push either full darts or half darts. All you have to do is have an adapter for the magwell. Uh, so those are really cool. More briefings. End War stickers. Somebody gave me a bunch of <coughs> barrel attachments. Different designs from the Blair County House of Nerf. They gave me a patch that's going on the wall. And a bunch of really neat looking barrel attachments. In my colors. Slightly translucent. All super cool. Throw a note. There's a note. Hello, my name is Josh Franz. I run Franz Frameworks and have my friends in all sorts of thing, nerf related things in Pennsylvania. Uh, enclosed is a patch from the club I help run and some prototype barrels we will be selling soon to support our club. I help run them. Total nine total designs. There are three for review for you. Hope to nerf again together if you're ever in Pennsylvania again. So, yeah. <clears throat> I really, I, I really kind of like that one, which is basically just this one, similar to this one, but sliced off. I like it. So I'll be uh, putting those on something. I'm sure I can find something. All right, what else do we have in here? Nope. 
Ned Kelly. That was the Australian. A little Lego Ned Kelly. There. Leave off. Apparently, I ended up with more ammo counter ammo and another ammo counter sticker. I got a Bang My Rang Captain patch from Bobo Lobo because he thinks he's hilarious. Um, <laughs> um, so that's going on the wall. FNA. Um, I don't, I don't know who this is. Anybody? Anybody? FNA? No? It's nicely embroidered. Doesn't have Velcro on the back. I'll have to add Velcro. I got eucalyptus. Pure Australian taste. Eucalyptus drops. They've all merged together. Somebody made basically baseball cards. The Atomic Dart League made baseball cards. And I have one of them of Ian Hamilton. Murder, murder, murder you. Not as just, actually just lint. Um, this is apparently number 29. And I, uh, somebody was talking about doing something like this. And I think it would actually be really neat if people in the Nerf hobby had basically trading cards, baseball cards, uh, especially for the Nerf YouTubers. So you could have like their before 100,000K card would be their essentially their rookie card. And, you know, then afterwards you make new ones and you get them at events and you get pictures of, oh, here's his heavy loadout. Here's his competitive loadout. And I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, I have a whole bunch of the pins that Foam Blast sells, both auxiliary pins that have the auxiliary logo as well as X-Strike pins. And uh, I will probably end up carrying those with me to events and doling them out to deserving auxiliary who do courageous deeds along with various other commendations um oh okay i also have the uh nerfing for autism um keychains that are little puzzle pieces that say nerfing for autism on them that was an event i went to that was absolutely fantastic where on earth did all of my x-strike patches go i could have sworn i had two probably on my gear somewhere i hope they're on my gear somewhere i hope i've got them i'll probably just order another one i like supporting foam blast um yeah, okay. So, there's the swag. Um, or at least as much of it as I was able to locate. Like I said, it's been a while, plus it was right after I moved, so Lord knows where anything is. A um, lot of cool stuff. Um, both Foam Blast and Out of Darts now carry Captain X merchandise, if you're interested. Um, Out of Darts has t-shirts and apparently hasn't sold many of them. Tragic. Um, but I really like the pins and the patches. Very, very cool. Um, yeah. All right, I think I've blathered enough. A lot of cool stuff. I'll have to now figure out where I'm going to keep all of this stuff. Uh, a lot of the patches I need to add Velcro to so I can put them on the wall. Luckily, I have sticky back Velcro. I can just add it to and cut it out, and it'll be lovely. And uh, got to put that somewhere. Yeah, add Ned Kelly to my Lego room um, whenever I get that built. Good stuff. Okay, so... Next time, what stories do we have for next time? So we do have West vs. Zombies still, so that will still be an option. Uh, we will also have Ragnar Oktoberfest as an option. I believe I now have the after-action reports from all three auxiliary lieutenants from all three teams. So um, if that story gets chosen, I will probably just read the after-action reports uh, out loud because they were fairly detailed reports. The guys who did the reports did a really good job, so I need to make sure I don't lose them all and um, get them posted down. Um, so, yeah, so we've got West vs. Zombies, Ragnar Oktoberfest, or probably I'll, I think I'll throw Nerfing for Autism in there because that was an event I wouldn't mind talking about because it was a really good event. So those will be your three choices for next month. Nerfing for Autism, Ragnar Oktoberfest, or um, West vs. Zombies. All right. Thank you for watching. Ned. <laughs>